This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Gary Marshall, director of Mother's Day, amongst many other classic movies. Hi, how are you? <laughs> uh, I want to start by just sort of taking a broader perspective of your career in terms of how do you find inspiration as you go to new films as, as you continue your career? I mean, at this point, you've done so many accomplished films, so many well-known projects. How, how do you keep that energy going each time you approach a new project like Mother's Day? Oh, seriously, I play softball still, and I have a relaxation. You need a distraction in show business. I play senior softball. It's a little older. It's a great leg. If you hit a double, they let you take a nap. It's very <laughs> uh, good. That sounds to... pretty awesome for me. I don't know even no, I'm doing my act. There's, there's no championship trophy. If you win, <laughs> the winning team gets free Lipitor. No, that's enough. <laughs> now, I, I do think every day... Uh, if you just pay attention to life, there's a lot of things you see and say, that'd make a good story. Or, and people I've been around, they seem to know where I live, not where I live. <laughs> I, have to, I honestly have the Falcon Theater. I have my own theater. We do plays, <laughs> legitimate plays, and they know they can drop off scripts there. So people are always sending me scripts. And then I know a lot of producers, and this was a, I have two wonderful producers, uh, Wayne Rice and my cause, and another lady who's been with me for 22 years as wow. a producer, Heather Hall, she's sitting there. <laughs> and uh, so we do get projects brought to me, and uh, many of them are like. Somebody brought me holidays there for a while, so they wanted to do another holiday. But honestly, I wanted to do kind of a salute to mothers. I mm. think mothers have a hard, hard job. And, you know, I love working with women, so uh, this was a chance to get a bunch of them. Yeah, one of the things that's really notable about this and a lot of your films is that there's such a impressive cast to them. How do you sort of go about balancing a picture to give all these different talented actors sort of their opportunity or their moment to shine, or are they just so excited to take part in these projects like you, they really don't? care what you have them doing? Well, I, I think they care, but I must say I, I, I am kind of a defensive director. If uh, uh, if you don't blow something up and you don't have somebody fly, they're not so interested in your movie. So I get them interested by having the cast who don't fly or explode, but they're quite good. If you, if you combine those two things together for another movie, that might be the perfect combination. Well, flying and blowing up and stars, uh, I don't know, maybe. It's hard to blow more. you got to blow them all up. It's too hard. But I like uh, to actually play a person because I still, there's still room for wonderful actors like Jennifer Aniston who's so genuine and real and tells a story and you think your friend is telling you the story and she makes the other actors always real also and so uh, it makes for I think good storytelling which I think still is a part of life you know. I didn't make that up. <laughs> I in, would. in college at Northwestern I read the poetics. Aristotle says in the poetics you gotta have a beginning, middle and end. In Hollywood they say you don't have to have that anymore, let's blow them up and fly. <laughs> Aristotle didn't write about flying. I go with Aristotle, a beginning, yeah. middle and end. Crazy me. He's been known for, you know, several thousand years, so he must be doing something. Yeah, right? he didn't write it yesterday in the Times. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a really interesting idea. A lot of these people you've worked with before, a lot of them have worked with each other before. How did that sort of affect the process of making this film? We're, with somebody like Julia Roberts, I know you've worked with her several times. Do you just say, you know, do what you do? Or, or just, do you guys know each other so well at this point that you would both know what... Well, know? I do know who a lot of the actresses, and I, I do. We're very careful to create the character, and I do it with wardrobe and hair and everything. It's all a part of the character. And uh, and then we, we talk, and a lot of times I know how to you know, go deep and to tell me uh, the inner life when we were a child, what is this and that. But I think it's sometimes, it boils down to it, I know more so well that sometimes I just do louder, softer, Faster, slower. That's a lot of my directing with these people. That's pretty special. Um, 
one of the things that I'm thinking about while I think back on the movie is this film has some very progressive topics, you know, um, gay marriage, interracial relationships, you know, uh, single parents, stuff like that. How, how do you go about balancing serious topics like that, trying to give those sweet to the, you know, the drama, and also have some comedy to it? Because it feels like it could be difficult to balance all those elements thematically when you do a film. Well, balance is hard, and, uh, and to be honest, I shoot, I overshoot, and I do a lot of it in the editing room, balancing it out. But this was quite hip for me. I'm not known as hip, but I always, on my movies, have a, a couple of 21-year-olds in the cast. They're good, and they're actors, but I also, I remember, suddenly Kate Hudson said Snapchat. She had lived, and he said, oh, what are you, 12? I had no idea what they were talking about. I went to the 21-year-old. I said, this happened. They said, oh, that's funny. I said, oh, good. <laughs> but and we Skyped, and for the, I don't... Uh, I'm afraid of heights, to be honest with you. So my son, Scott, who is also a director of other movies, but he directs Sex and Unit for me, so he did all the helicopter shots. And for the first time, I don't have no idea how to do it, but he shot with drones. We had a couple of drone shots in, in uh, Pretty Woman. Uh, another subject I know nothing about. So, I, so my hipness is created by surrounding myself yeah, with hip people. Well, we're doing and the topics today. I am aware of the topics and how to do it in, in hopefully uh, depicting other people's lives that never used to be depicted. I try to do it with humor and uh, and we get the balance and I mostly uh, look for people who are funny I mean uh, John Lovitz walks on and, and I give him a dog and that, he's funny he walks on you don't say oh he's serious but we balance it off and I had a couple of this kid out of Great Britain I don't think anybody knows Jack Whitehall is a big comic there and they said well he wants to act in a movie and uh, I said can he kiss good I don't take people who can't kiss good I do rom-coms romantic to kind of kiss he's a pretty good and I knew a Brit Robinson since she's 12 and she's terrific so we did have some newcomers I always like to balance you know wonderful stars and some newcomers so it gives you both the things you've known and maybe some surprises of seeing new people. This is the third of the holiday type movies that you've done with Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve. Did you have any sort of other plans or did you just, is it just a well-oiled machine for you to do these sort of holiday type movies at this point? Well, it's not always, but it's part of the business that people are saying more and more it's true is, is it's about money <laughs> so when you get down to money I don't feel that money should get in the way of humor <laughs> so the new uh, other than the ensemble plan is different you know to hire some of the people I hire for a full movie is more money than anybody's going to pay but if I call them I'm say hey come on do three days do one week Come on in, and we'll have a good time. And I, I do a totally open set. I never have a closed set. So everybody brings their relatives, and they get to play before the had these big soccer scenes with Jason Sudeikis, and we played with his son Otis, who was two, ran around the whole park before we shot. So they usually... Uh, I promise them a good time, and I usually can give them a good time while they're doing terrific acting, and for the right financial package to put together all these stars, and they don't have to work for three months. Do you have any plans for after this movie? Do you intend to do further holiday-type films? Do you even think that far ahead you sort of approach it project by project, or what's your sort of outlook? Well, I find the... the Business, show business, life is more important than show business. That's my motto. But I find show business a little fickle. And so I keep moving around. I'm doing the odd couple, the new odd couple on uh, television. I'm, uh, I'm acting. I play Oscar's father, I think, on this week on something. On the new odd couple, Channel 2, CBS. But, uh, and then what we're 
Well, I've been really excited about lately is we're doing Pretty Woman as a Broadway musical. And, uh, pardon me? It seems like they're appropriate that they're bringing that up. Oh, they make everything a Broadway musical. There was a little problem for years, but we finally licensed it from Disney. We're doing it independently. And uh, we got uh, Jerry Mitchell, terrific director from Kinky Boots and uh, Hairspray and Legally Blonde, and, and J.F. Lawton, who wrote the original screenplay, and I are doing the book. And we got uh, Brian Adams, a great songwriter and singer, and Jim Valance, they're doing the music, so we're pretty excited about that. But in between, I could do another holiday. You don't know, but uh, I have some other movies on the my desk, but we'll see what happens. But, you know, in between softball games, I got to do something. So movies are nice. Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. And I get to meet a lot of wonderful people. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Gary. Uh, I wish you the best of luck with Mother's Day that's coming out this Friday. Um, and whatever's next, I can't wait to see. And well, good. I'm in Seattle. Yeah, it's nice here. Congratulations it. on the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, yeah. I'm get, they give you an award when you hit a certain age. They give you a lot of lifetime things, which uh, I am thrilled to get. I, I, would hope, I would wish that I could get a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> uh, so that's well, awesome. it's give it, going to be given to me here in Seattle by Hector Alessandro. I have directed 18 pictures. Hector Alessandro has been in all 18. A lot of directors can't say that. No, it seems like <laughs> the perfect person to give it to. Uh, congratulations on everything. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you very much, Ben.